Hello, everyone in the chat, or the people who aren't in the chat. You're going to have to let me know if uh, the quality on this is suitable or not, because YouTube... YouTube streaming, man, it used to be so good, and now it's just so very questionable. Like, no matter how much of a bitrate you give it, it's like, no, I need more, and then you have to remind it, no, you, you really don't. You were able to stream with, like, 3 meg really easily, like, no time ago. You were able to do that, and now it's like, oh, four and a half, that, that's not enough. It's not enough, you got to give me more. Because YouTube is just slightly whore-like, I guess, these days, for some reason. But, yeah, we're, we're going to do some nice, chill Death Watch gaming, because why the hell not? I've got some really cool dudes since the last time. Look, we've got, we've got loads of uh, level 4 guys, like the, the top level. The very tippity toppity bestie bestie guys. Who I have been desperately trying to level up so they don't absolutely and completely totally suck. It's going to take a while. Because, obviously, we've got uh, all of these abilities, which I'm going to have to do. And uh, we've got the most expensive one so far, which is uh, the extra action point. That was, like, 20k. So we got that. So we've got five extra action points. It's going to be great. Everything is fine. When am I doing monthly live streams again? Probably never, because they were shit. So I'm not going to bother. Do we want to continue with the thing, or do we want to grind a little bit. I might do some just casual grinding on this, get some uh, get some awesome XP up for my dudes who really need it. So I've got my level 3 tactical marine, level 4 tactical marine there. They really need to level up. Actually, this guy I think is pretty much done. We just need to like uh, unlock some war gear slots and really increase his accuracy. It's not very good at the moment. But he's got, uh, he's got a pretty damn good bolter there, so it's not really much of a surprise that he can't hit anything, the accuracy. It's kind of weird in this game. It's, as war gear improves, it becomes less accurate. It, it, it's weird. I've never fully understood that. Well, I guess it's, oh, you want to use the really awesome gun? You've got to make sure you've got some leveled up dudes, otherwise you're not allowed to use it. Video game logic, all of that artificial gatekeeping to really cool gear and whatnot. Sorry, I just had to stir my drink there for some reason. The powder that's in it doesn't seem to have wanted to dissolve properly. I've got clumps. Oh no, clumps in a drink. Why on earth would it do that? Ever played the Warhammer Fantasy game? Yes, it's pretty good. Yes, there are video games of it. Uh, best one you can get is probably Total War Warhammer which is a Total War game set in Warhammer Fantasy. So obviously, if you don't like Total War games, you won't like it. But if you do like Total War games, you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, the problem is it's set... Um, is it before or after they retconned literally everything? Uh, I think it's set after that. I can't really remember. It's been ages since I last played it. But yeah, Games Workshop did that thing, what was it, like, Age of Sigmar or something, where they were like, oh yeah, by the way, the entire planet blew up or something, but then it didn't, we and, our brother, uh, and Skaven the and something, the and yeah, it was like, what, do you guys even know what the hell is going on anymore, and realistically, no, they didn't. I think it was basically just an excuse for them to uh, crap out a load of miniatures and justify changing everything. Games Workshop does that a lot. It's, uh, model comes first and then the lore and the reasoning, that that's kind of secondary. It's like, no, we're going to make this really cool thing and people are going to want to buy it. Okay, cool, how can we justify selling it to them? Oh, I know, let's just, like, totally retcon everything that we ever did and... Th yeah, sure, let, let's, let's do that. It'll be great. Reminds me, god, I miss the squats. Squats were great. Best 40k race ever, and, like, no one knows about them because they got eaten by Tyranids. Because Games Workshop was like, eh, no one really likes the squats. But, no, they were wrong. Fucking space dwarves. They were great. 
I really think they could have uh, revamped them and made them like a lot better. Because yeah, some of the old models they were based on. Well, it was because it was it was the age of uh, Games Workshops, like in sort of the late ninety, late eighties, early nineties. They had like everything was a lot more light-hearted than it is now. Like it's always been pretty fucking atrocious, but compared to like what it is now, it's it was a lot lighter hearted like the orcs were more a sort of comedy slightly ridiculous race and you had things like the squats which was based on it wasn't even like tolkien dwarves which were at least a little bit serious it was like full-on terry pratchett style dwarves they were just completely ridiculous and that was before they even start talking about the actual fantasy dwarves but yeah that, that's sort of what the squats were based on and they were they were fun. I think they could really uh, ramp them up and actually make them something awesome now. There's actually um, there's some really cool squat conversions actually, which I've seen online. Which is basically like you take like really heavily fantasy armed um, uh, the fantasy dwarves. I think they're like iron bearers or something, like really heavily armored ones, and then you give them. Then you give them like Space Marine arms and arm pads, and they actually end up looking pretty awesome. And I, I think that's like sort of what the squats should be. Like they they could really bring them back and turn them into something great. Isn't Warhammer World like super dark and depressing? Yeah, but it hasn't always been really super dark and depressing. Like go and look at sort of like the really really old Warhammer miniatures, and there's a lot more sort of light-hearted, almost almost comedy sort of models in there so it, it has like the mythos was frequently darker than the art department and it took kind of like about a decade for the art department to catch up and to sort of actually make things that looked terrifying as opposed to slightly comical and you got to remember like the first and second edition um Actually, it's really sort of like the first edition Space Marines back when they all had Mark VI helmets. They were tiny little guys, you know, they were like no bigger than the Imperial Guard models, which was like, I'm sorry, what? Have you even read your own lore, guys? And there was also a lot more squigs for the Orcs to mess around with. Those things were just little balls of pure fucking comedy. Yeah, it's pretty much uh, what we've got in the chat there. It depends on the perspective. Some writers gave it a more hopeful and heroic tone, whereas for other people it was always just bleak, dark, and miserable and depressing. I kind of like the bleak, dark, miserable, depressing thing, though. I think it's sort of... It, it's a lot more in keeping with sort of the theme of, like, Humanity is beset on all sides, and also humanity is basically just a bunch of xenophobic um, war criminals who just hate everything and want to kill everything because it's the only way for them to survive. Rather than the, oh, it is the, the true glory of the Imperium, and it's, yeah, it's kind of like, no, the, the whole glory angle is basically just propaganda. It's, I, I like that, I prefer that. You gotta remember, not everything that is dark and depressing has to be liked by edgy teenagers. It's it's kind of sad, it's like the edgy teenager meme has kind of ruined things being dark and miserable and depressing. It's like, look, there are things in the world which are dark and miserable and depressing, and there are ways of expressing that. The problem is, whenever anyone tries to do it, it's like, oh, you're just being like a super edgy, miserable teenager. Like, no, not really. The horrors of war are very real, and not things that most teenagers can deal with or even comprehend. But, you know, everyone, it, it's like out-edging the edge lords. It's like, oh, look at you, you're trying to be so edgy. You know, it's like out-edging out them. Because it's like, oh, look at me, I'm so edgy that I don't consider anything to be edgy. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. 
Sounds to me like you're just being a try-hard raging faggot, but oh well. God, just learn to hit things. Come on, guys. I know your hit rate is low, but that's why we're here. When's the next live stream or video on the news about liberal retards? Eh, whenever I get around to it. I've got like three or four. Yeah, see, chat's got it right there. Someone can be a misanthrope for logical reasons. Yeah, absolutely. There are completely valid reasons to hold those positions. It's just that people like to sort of try and play like, oh no, you're just doing it because you're being emotional. It's it's kind of like the weak-ass argument that people make when they don't have an argument. Basically just say, oh, you're just being emotional and therefore you're wrong. And it's like, no. People can hold emotional positions for logical reasons. Some responses to things aren't based on emotion, just completely rational. But, you know, if you call someone emotional, that means they're wrong for some reason. But yeah, when am I next doing a live stream on things like that? Probably never, because I don't really care. Uh, there's enough people on YouTube um, basically shouting at articles they don't like already, so I don't think I really need to add any more to that. There's just kind of a wall of noise around that sort of content already, so if you want to find it, you can probably find it. Um, but when am I next going to do a video? That's going to be like whenever I get around to it. Like I was saying, I, um, uh, I've got like sort of three or four videos that I've sort of got done like in my head. Like I know what I want to show, what I want to talk about, when and how and all of that stuff. It's just finding A, the time to do it and B, just the motivation to do it. Uh, the motivation is the big problem at the moment. My health has been really not very good over the last couple of weeks. I've, I've had, like, uh, the week off this week, and I've basically not got out of bed all week. Just the, uh, the fatigue problems and the pain are just getting really, like, a lot worse lately. You know, it's like the, the fatigue problems that I'm having are getting to the point where, you know, holding a mobile phone up to the side of my head to talk to someone for, like, a couple of minutes is absolutely exhausting, which is just fucking sad, really, but that's the... That's the state of play at the moment, health-wise. Not really a whole lot that can be done about it, so... Uh, the idea of sitting, recording, editing, and all of that stuff is just... Uh, that, that's kind of way out of the ballpark at the moment for things that I'm actually going to be able to do. Um, but hopefully I'll get one done maybe next week. Sort of... Um, I'm basically trying to, like, streamline the planning process so there's, like, as little, um, physical and mental effort on my part to do it, and then I should be able to sort of, uh, streamline the process down and get it done, um, just as easy. You're asking because you like my thoughts. It's, it's completely fine, you know, it's, it's fine. Like, I, I know that people ask about... You know, it's like, oh, you're you're a content creator, why aren't you making content? And what? It's a reasonable question, especially when you've been doing it for, like, a number of months or years. I, I don't think it's unreasonable for people to have a certain expectation of you. Um, it's just, obviously, uh, health priorities and problems have to come first. And, you know, when I do get a few hours a day when I feel like, oh, I can actually do stuff, you know, I, I can sort of think properly and actually move properly, uh, I kind of have to prioritize other things like getting food and doing laundry and cleaning the house and things like that, so, yeah. You thought this was a meme stream, now you're sad. All my streams are memes. Don't let your streams not be memes, bro. It's not a depressing thing, it's just a factual thing. <clears throat> uh, someone was asking about how Sargon retired. That's hilarious to me. Like, he spent 24 hours trying to be a really super serious politician, getting so high off his own farts, shoving his head so far up his ass, and, uh... Yeah, then he did his... I, I, it, it's just so funny, man. 
like watching a guy suck on his own farts by getting them out through his dick is hilarious to me. Um, yeah, he tried being a politician for like 24 hours and then he couldn't hack it because people were giving him shit pointing out that uh, he really doesn't have any good ideas or anything like that. Um, all the media hit pieces, which is so hilarious because he did that shitty response video to me, which I still really want to just absolutely anally rape him over the internet for doing, you know, metaphorically, of course. Um, because he he made no points in that and basically just spent 20 minutes huffing his own farts. Um, but it's so funny because he was all like, oh, why, why don't why don't you go do a press conference? Press conferences are nothing, yeah. And then he just got a sl another slew of fucking hit pieces written about him. <laughs> it's just so funny. And then it comes out that, like, UKIP doesn't actually really like having him around that much. Uh, members are speaking out against him and saying, like, yeah, there's no fucking way that actually when UKIP was actually doing something, there's no way he'd have been let in because the party actually had standards. Like, it's just so funny. I, I have to wonder whether him going into his, like, early retirement or what he's trying to spin into Phase 2 is actually just because reality finally hit him and he realised that he's not actually cut out for politics at all. Because he's not intelligent enough and he's not educated enough. Uh, despite what he likes to do where he snarkily had a go at me for that, it's like, Oh, oh, politicians are dumb. Let me just name some politicians. Some of them, you know that, like, two of those politicians graduated from Cambridge, yeah? You know one of those, you know, it's, first of all, all four of them hold degrees. Two of them hold degrees from Cambridge, and the fourth of them has a PhD. It's, yeah, you don't, you don't get those things by being stupid. It's actually the average... Or well, basically the minimum IQ requirement for you to even get into a university, and that includes doing, like, uh, you know, the liberal arts sort of really piss-easy women's studies shit. Um, you basically have to be at least one standard deviation above the average, so you're looking sort of 115, 120 IQ as a minimum to do that. But if you're looking at graduating, again, you kind of need to be basically there as a minimum. PhDs is basically a minimum requirement of about 125 to 130 IQ. But these people are morons, according to Sargon. And that's Sargon, who's, um, <coughs> whose education finished at A-levels. Um, because there's actually, um, there's actually a really amusing thing which I found out, which is, uh, reading a copy of his CV, which is publicly available. Um, he did, I think... What was it? Half a dozen GCSEs in which he got B to C grades. No, B to D grades, sorry. Um, the average attainment for someone is, um, in this country, is the same number of GCSEs A to C grade. So he didn't even reach the national average in his ability to do GCSEs. And then he achieved... He tried to do three A-levels, he got a B in one of his A-levels, he failed the other two. Um, and one of the hilarious things is one of the ones he failed was General Studies, and General Studies requires you to have about a 12-year-old's understanding of English, Math, Science, History, Geography, Politics. It's a course that, um, speaking to some teachers that I know and reading a few things about it on the internet, if you can read and understand a broadsheet newspaper, you know, not, not one of the shitty tabloid things, but one of the proper, supposedly highbrow broadsheet things, if you can read that and understand it, you should be able to pass um, general studies, and he couldn't even manage that. And it's so funny, like, someone who wants a career in politics couldn't even pass the only A-level that he did that had anything even vaguely to do with politics. Uh, but remember, he's really smart, and everyone who's in politics is really, really dumb. Never mind the fact that going by educational achievement, and keep in mind IQ correlates to educational achievement pretty well, um, going by his own educational achievement, he is basically 100 to 105, otherwise known as not as smart as you think you are. He is basically the very definition of a hair's breadth above average at absolute maximum.
why haven't I done a video reply to it yet? Because, first of all, I've got more important and far more interesting things to do. And second of all, I'm not sure how I'd want to approach it. I do want to do one, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, like, how in-depth I want to go with it, because... And also, I'm not actually... I, I, like, I do want to do it, but I also can't be bothered, because he doesn't say shit in that 20-minute time. It's like, oh, this isn't about my ego. This is about... Uh, this isn't about my ego, this is about your ego. Oh, I'm I'm one degree of separation away from Donald Trump. People know who I am. I talk to you, Kip. <laughs> Nigel Farage knew who I was, and to me that also very heavily shows that he doesn't have a fucking clue how politics works. Um, because um, when you talk to a politician, they know who everyone is that they talk to because they have a team of people, you know, like interns and researchers and whatnot, and general handlers, um, that follow around, that follow them around and basically say, okay, you're going to be meeting this person at this time, this is what they're called, and this is what they've done. So it's like, so they know who they're talking to, because it's really good optics to be able to walk into a meeting with someone, shake their hand, look them in the face, and be all like, oh, yeah, I I, I know you, I know you, and call them by their first name. You know, it makes your constituents feel really important and like you're paying attention to them. Because part of the reason that politicians are actually quite smart is because they're really good manipulators like that. They have to be, it's part of their job. Um, so the very fact that it's like, oh, Nigel Farage knows who I am, it's like, yeah, because before he went into the meeting with you, he was told who you are, so that you could feel good about yourself because he knew your, because he knew your name. Congratulations, you played literally into manipulation fucking 101 when it comes to politicians, and yet you actually thought it made you fucking special. So it's just, it's pretty fucking funny. What about Democrats? They don't have researchers, they have artificial fields and half-truths. Uh, no, they have researchers as well, it's just that um, all political parties do this. They all have researchers, but a lot of them tend to have... Uh, they do have researchers, but their researchers um, can be prone to bias, as any researcher can be. Any researcher can be prone to bias at all. Um, and that's kind of where a lot of the problems come in. It's also actually why when politicians give speeches on things, they tend to give a lot of stock answers. Uh, the reason being is because they tend to have all of their speeches and information um, uh, given to them by basically the same teams of people, because political parties tend to share similar people who do all of that information and whatnot. That's why politicians tend to all speak the same and say the same things on the same points. It's actually one thing that I dislike about politics, to be fair, is... Um, the fact that you get people, as I mentioned, uh, politicians are actually quite smart, despite what some people would think. Um, <clears throat> the problem is, they tend to only know, like, one area or one or two areas, which uh, they actually sort of know about. Um, like, take, um, oh, what's his name? I can't remember, but there's like a politician who's like, you know, there's actually quite a few of them, again, who have PhDs in things like uh, economics and whatnot. And the thing is, what they do is they won't actually then be assigned to do anything with economics. Um, or they might be in some cases, but then they'll often be expected to speak outside of that subject as well. So the problem is, you get people who are quite smart and quite well educated on like one or two topics, and then the problem is they're handed a load of stuff that they're expected to talk about and have a load of stuff piled on them dealing with topics that they don't know anything about. And that then is why a lot of them end up saying, um, you know, quite a lot of stupid things. Because they're talking about topics that they don't know anything about, that they actually have no education or experience in. So that's where they have to fall back on that information given to them by interns and handlers and whatnot. <clears throat> so, yeah, that, that's uh, sort of why so many politicians, like, appear to be really stupid. Is they're not actually stupid. It's just that they're expected to talk on things they know nothing about. In a lot of cases, and sometimes they get fed shit information. And sometimes, um, the researchers who do things for them are biased. And of course there are the fact that some politicians are just full-on biased and agenda-pushing themselves, which isn't to be, uh, discounted. 
Yeah, exactly. The chat is right. It's what makes politicians look dumb is ignorance of the subject or the arrogance uh, blinds them from learning. It's, yeah. There are some people um, who do, you know, they, they get a sort of good education in something, they are intelligent, and then they do think that, oh, that just means that I understand loads of other things. It's kind of like, nah, no, you really don't. There's a degree of flexibility and um, transferability um, from skills and knowledge, but not always. <clears throat> so yeah, politics, it's a complicated game like that. And it's just funny when you get people who have absolutely no fucking idea about that talking like they're really important and like they actually matter, and it's like, yeah, no you don't. Like, you don't matter, you're not as important as you think you are, you're nowhere near as intelligent as you think you are, please stop making an absolute ass out of yourself. So yeah, that that was basically Sargon's retirement there. He uh, he bit off way more than he could chew because he's nowhere near as smart as he thinks he is. He's nowhere near as educated as he thinks he is. Um, he's a shit poster on the internet who's bought into his own populist message, and who thinks he's gonna like save the West or something like that. The reality is he isn't. He's basically a useful idiot who has attached himself to the UKIP party by his own words. He's not interested in what the party does. Uh, he seems to be very contemptuous of the party that he's joined. I mean, you join a party and you're like, oh, it's like your auntie's barbecue. It's, yeah, that really contemptuous attitude towards the party that you're supposed to be supporting. Um, I, I do think that some of his, um, his recent semi-retirement after taking fucking 24 hours of being raked over the coals in a way and manner to an actual politician was just too much for him and now it's like, oh yeah, I actually can't do this. Or I don't know, maybe he'll come back with his ego twice as strong and think that, you know, he just, if only his suit fitted a little bit better, he'll make something out of himself. It's no, no you're not. It's true, it's like, as chat says, he thinks trolling someone is an argument because his sheep tell him he was brilliant, yeah. So I don't like bringing up people's audiences and attacking people's audiences or making uh, generalized statements about them. Um, because everyone has the, the sycophants in their audience, everyone has the people who think that that person can do no wrong and is always right and blah 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 blah. Um, it just so happens, obviously, as your audience expands, that proportion grows. And I think uh, for the Sugan, it's got to a point where he can basically just put himself into a complete and utter echo chamber surrounded by those people who think that no matter what he does, it's always brilliant and some like sort of 4D chess move or some shit. And it's like, nah, nah, not even close. <clears throat> Oh, you're not a politician. Oh, but I will be when I run for it. No, you won't. You have to actually get people to vote for you, you fucking moron. Please stop. <laughs> he won't be back. He wants to do thought-out pieces, and when he will fail and someone will destroy his good argument, he's gone. Oh, you mean Sargon wants to make good arguments made out with, like, long, thought-out videos? Well, careful, Sargon, you wouldn't want to become boring like me, would you? You know, making researched and thought-out points, you wouldn't want to get boring now. <laughs> That's my favorite non-argument people make in my direction. Like, oh, you're, you're, you're mad, salty jelly, because I've got more subscribers than you and your content's boring. Like, no. First of all, I don't give a shit about the numbers game, never have, never will, because this is a hobby for me, and, uh... Second of all, I... Don't... Yeah, it's like I just don't care about the numbers, and second of all, my content... It's clearly so boring that hundreds of thousands and tens of thousands of people watch it every week. It's, uh, yeah, it's really boring. You know, it must be that no one cares, no one wants to watch it, apart from those, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who do. Yeah. It's a wonderful argument you've got there, dumbass. 
He thinks his failure is due to overextension, not actual limitations. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty much an, um, on the head of the nail statement there. Like, he doesn't actually accept that he's, uh, that he's got limitations that he can't exceed. It's like, oh no, it's just, it's all, the causes are all environmental. It's not that I have a limiting factor. It's other things, it's other people that are doing this to me. No, it's just that you, you have a level of incompetence. And look, everyone has a level of incompetence in every subject, you know, there's no... Uh, you know, there's, there's no shame uh, in admitting that you have a level of incompetence somewhere. There's no shame in not knowing something or just saying, like, look, I'm just bad at this subject or this topic or this skill. It's, you know, the, you can't be good at everything. It's just part of life. But, you know, egotists like to think that those limits don't apply to them, that they can do anything. And they can't. And when they find that out, they, uh... They have a real sort of hard time checking it and accepting it. The thing is, actually, it's, I don't want to turn this just into a Herpy Dirks are on so dumb stream, but it's really easy given all the shit that he's been doing lately. Um, but the thing is, as I pointed out by his educational attainments and the fact that he's basically spent his entire life working in fucking stock rooms and shit like that, you can basically tell that he's one of life's losers. He's one of those people who's never really achieved anything, never really accomplished anything. And so when he got good at basically shouting at articles that he doesn't like on the internet because he was doing it at the right time to get picked up in the momentum of the Gamergate movement, it's like the first major success that he's had in his life and so he really really thinks that it's like all down to him as opposed to like a little bit down to him and quite a lot down to circumstance of what was happening at the time and so he's like grown his really big ego around this it's like oh this is the thing i've succeeded at i must be really good i must be so smart i must be really talented it's, eh, not really uh, obviously there is a degree of talent and skill required to do YouTube stuff, but the ceiling is not very high. Um, a lot of people who get big on YouTube get big by circumstance alone. Um, like you've got people trying to game the algorithm all day, every day. And there are some people who they don't change anything that they're doing for years on end and then a change in the algorithm just suddenly shoots their channel up in front of everyone because it fits that round of the algorithm at the moment. And then same thing happens in reverse. There's really big channels which over the course of like six months just completely die because changing the algorithm uh, fucks them over. So, you know, some people I think have got slightly big heads about uh, the fact that an algorithm kind of spat them out at the right time. <clears throat> So yeah, there you go. <clears throat> this is all chat does at the moment. They basically just chat. I know your game. It's like name a topic and see if you can trigger me into like a 10 or 15 minute long rant about that topic. You did it, chat. Well done. Yeah, so you go. It's like there's nothing wrong with being perfectly normal in life, but gaining a big ego by doing something tons of other people do is laughable. Yeah. That's pretty much what's going on. He thinks he's a turning point in GG because there was a homage anniversary thing. I don't remember his face on the wall, I remember TB. So yeah, it's again, there's some people do that. It's like they get like one piece of fan art and they're like, Oh my god, I'm so important. It's no, no you really aren't. Please stop. <clears throat> about cheese making next uh, I don't know a whole lot about cheese making can't, can't really talk about that 
I do, uh, that wasn't my intent to do, Mr. T. All this year. Bullshit. You are the sent one. I know you. I've seen you in other streams. You know how this works by now. <laughs> this wasn't my intent. Yes, it was. I just want to point out there's nothing wrong with having that intention. It works. Now keep in mind this is a live stream and when you're live streaming you are doing it specifically to entertain people. So if people provoke you to be entertaining, then you're kind of just living up to your end of the bargain, aren't you? <clears throat> I don't know how much XP we're getting here. Eh, a fair amount. There's another thing, I've got people to chat to while I grind this mission relentlessly for XP, so uh kinda makes the grind a little bit easier. <clears throat> Just gotta get them XP points so we can get all them abilities and all of that. Yeah, see, again, there's people who get uh, YouTube success out of luck. Like, look at Monday, Matt, he's a D-rate. DeFranco, but got popularity because he was flagged by Zoe Quinn. Yeah. So there are people who, like I said, there, there's people who just basically luck into it by circumstance. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with lucking into it by circumstance. Um, <clears throat> um, but the thing is, about lucking into things by circumstance, it's, it's weird. Because you can actually see the number of people who did luck into YouTube, and you can see that when... Uh, there's a lot of, like, the bigger YouTubers and people ask them, like, oh, what advice would you give to smaller channels? And they always just kind of have that, that sort of slightly glassy expression while they think about it. And then they're like, oh, you just have to try really hard and, and keep trying and, like, follow your dream and work hard. You know, they can never actually give you concrete advice in how to succeed on YouTube. Probably because they don't have any concrete advice, because they kind of just did something and lucked into it, probably because of algorithms, or maybe being shared around by someone else larger than you. You know, so it's it's just pretty funny like that. It's just listening to YouTubers try and give <coughs> try and give advice on how to YouTube. It's like, oh just just follow your dreams, man, you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's kind of like, well, you can do that, or you can produce what you want to produce and then just hope that you kind of get lucky. Because I think luck plays a far bigger part of it than skill, frankly. As I said, don't discount skill entirely. There is some skill you require, but... I think people overestimate the skill and underestimate the luck. Also, don't underestimate sucking the right dicks, either physically or metaphorically. Got a good old skeptic community, which is uh, basically a prime example of that. Cozy up to people, don't question certain people, uh, make enemies out of other people because that's the cool in-group thing to be doing, you know. Uh, you can go far just by doing that. Can you talk about why it's retarded to think purpose-built weapons are any more deadly than shit you can just appropriate to use as a weapon? I'm more scared of a car hitting me than a rifle. Uh, yeah, it, you can make weapons out of basically anything. Like, seriously, it's like a ballpoint pen is a weapon. You know, you just have to know how to use it. But yeah, the idea that's like... I, people are just unduly scared of weapons. I think it's because there's quite a lot of people who um, just have never handled them, ever. And, like, don't know what to do with them and things like that, so they get scared because they don't know. Yeah, knowing when to jump on an opportunity is a skill on its own, but... It is, but how many people who jump on an opportunity are jumping on an opportunity because they recognize an opportunity, 
and how many people get in on there just because, um, you know, they were doing what they were doing at the right time. You know, that's the difference. I think a uh, certain Grim Reaper image springs to mind when it comes to looking at someone who knows when to jump on an opportunity. But then they overstep their bounds from jumping on an opportunity and get a big head about it and make themselves look like morons. Skeptic community has become so incestuous over the past year that I now feel dumb for being mad at you for saying the community was going to fuck shit over a year ago. Eh, don't, don't be mad about it. Like, it makes sense to be mad at someone, like, it's basically when they're telling you something you don't want to hear and something that, like, you know isn't true. Like, not like you know know that isn't true, but like that you highly suspect isn't true, that it just sort of sounds like a little bit weird and conspiratorial at the time, but, um, you know, so that, that makes sense, don't feel bad about it. Um, but it's just that there are certain things that you can see, like, it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard, hard to explain, but when you're used to looking for patterns in human behavior, you kind of just spot them and you're like, oh, I see what's happening here, and then you point it out and pe some people just won't accept that and then usually you're vindicated in time anyway because it's like yeah it's a, you know it's a thing it's how it goes yeah there's nothing wrong with having like internet friends and doing things with them but when that starts you know like blinding you to other shit that they're doing especially shady shit you know money exchanging hands under the table and all of that sort of crap um, when it results in uh, just blindly defending people because of who they are rather than actually looking at what they've done, yeah, it starts becoming a problem. That's my opinion on Edward Bernays. I have no idea. I don't even know who that is. Like the name sounds maybe a little bit familiar, but I, I couldn't say anything like where I've heard it or why. I'm disappointed in the lack of our Space Marines banter in this mission. I think there's only been like one of them so far. I think they've got to a point where they're kind of bored. It's just like, oh, we're just standing here relentlessly killing things. You thought the Space Marines, they'd enjoy this. It's like, look, come on, you're fucking murdering things in the name of the Emperor. Come on, you guys love this sort of stuff. You're purging Xenos. What's not to love? I think we might actually be able to get this guy a couple more skills at the moment. So I think he might actually be alright. Maybe we'll uh, wander out of here and see what we can uh, upgrade to. Do I know who creates us? Asking for an Appleby manager. Who, who creates us as in who we are now? Well, that would be... That, that would be your parents. They're kind of responsible for the creation of you. If you mean in a grander sense of who created the universe, or what created the universe, well, Big Bang Theory is pretty much the best thing we've got going on. It's either that, or you can choose to believe in some sort of god or deity or aliens or something. I don't know, it's up to you. Oh, this poor guy. It's going to cost so much to upgrade him. Look at that. 
so so high level. <sighs> mm, that could be useful. We'll get that for the accuracy and the damage bonus. It's going to be really useful for taking out big scary things. Other than that, we just need more accuracy. Ew. Eh, I don't really like that ability. We can get him some extra war gear, I suppose. Does he really need extra war gear slots? Probably not. I kind of just want to get him to the point where he can hit things reliably. It's going to take a while, I think. Eh. Eh. 84%. You're getting there. I think we might finally be able to get this guy to 100% hit rate. Yeah! There we go. 100% hit rate. Good. He can now do things. He is reliable. Okay, what awesome abilities do we want this guy to have? Uh, possibly, if we field a shitload of Ultramarines. 90% damage mitigation, that could be really good. That could be fun. Melee mitigation, range damage mitigation, heal at the end of the turn. Healing at the end of the turn sounds like the most useful one, and remaining on Overwatch. You can pick up the damage mitigation later. For now, he'll just be... slightly squishy, I guess. I guess we can give him a little more accuracy as well. With your really shitty low-level bolt gun. Because <laughs> you can't hit anything else otherwise. Ah, oh, he's getting there. It's gonna be a while, but he'll, he'll get there. I haven't even started leveling this guy up. Probably should, because he's going to be a fucking badass. He's going to be like this guy when he gets to max level. He's really unstoppably awesome. I tend to not field a lot of melee guys, especially late game. They just get swamped and murdered. I'm going to go hit this Carnifex with a chainsword. What could possibly go wrong? Well, you mean other than literally everything? Maybe we'll continue onwards. Large Tyranid creature is stalking you. Oh, is this, uh... Was this the Carnifex mission? I can't remember if this is the Carnifex mission or not. Uh... I just noticed that... That seems like a really unusually placed reflection. Like, whose gun barrel is that? It seems to be synced up with this guy, or maybe that guy, but the reflection should be down here. That that reflection looks like it's behind him on the floor. Uh, maybe it's an optical illusion or something, but that just that that looks weird to me. Just that that little, it just looks strange. Hmm. Anyway, probably. Yeah, if we've got a really big creature, we probably do want to keep the Laz Cannon, to be fair. Maybe we'll bring a load of blind grenades along. Uh, you can keep that, because that's useful. You can keep that, because that's useful. Uh, we really needed you to have war gear, didn't we? You've already got blind grenades. So yeah, we've got got a few, got a few blind grenades. So in case something really big does show up, we'll well, we'll be all right. Maybe we'll see. Kill team. We are picking up signs of a yeah, this is this is the Carnifex mission. Okay. The zone quickly. Okay, yeah, this is the Carnifex mission. Okay, that's fine. Um, I kind of wish I bought more blind grenades then. Can we uh, restart the mission? No. Ah, uh, okay, fine. Fine. Fine.
It's fine. We're gonna... We're still gonna kill him. We've got, like, big-ass las cannon and whatnot, so we should be okay. Okie dokie. Let it begin. Really, you can't shoot anything from there? The Emperor is sad with you. That thing's not going to be able to get anywhere near us this turn, so it might be okay. We can just overwatch and we'll gun that thing down as it moves. The underleveled marine isn't inaccurate, his bolter just has a wide spread. <laughs> See, that's the kind of positivity we need, chat. Have a blind grenade, you'll enjoy it. Now you have one action point next turn. Enjoy it. I can't remember what that ability is. I have a feeling it's extra accuracy and damage for everyone or something. I really can't remember. Uh, you! Yeah, you're gonna be using the thing that gives you extra damage and accuracy. <laughs> and it's got no action points, because the heavy bolter mauled the ever-loving shit out of it. Now let's hopefully crit it to death with our amazing melter gun and a dude who's got like a 40-something percent crit chance. <clears throat> oh, what are you doing getting extra move points every turn? I forgot that that's a thing that it does. Yeah, because it's got uh, that thing. Freaking enrage ability. Have a grenade! Have a las cannon. Why can't... How can you not shoot that from there? Come on. You're embarrassing everyone in front of the chapter. I should have moved that guy there. We could have moved that round and shot it. You should still be able to shoot that from there. Mm. Alright. We'll move that up and maybe you can cripple that thing with some shots. Or not, you know, that's fine. Damn you and your enrage ability. Why would you have that ability? Well, what a surprise the unleveled Space Marine got killed. I can't say I'm that surprised. That's what you get for being underpowered. It's a little disappointing because I even got the Carnifex trophy achievement for killing a Carnifex without letting it move in um, one of the other things, one of the other missions. So I'm a little, little bit disappointed in our performance. Oh well. 
The thing will run around the corner, we'll las cannon it in the face next turn, then it'll die. <laughs> Card effects ran away from the melter gun. <laughs> it was just like, ah, oh, you know what? Screw that guy with his melter gun. <laughs> Kind effects boy got scared. <laughs> I think we did it, guys. I think we just killed the Kind effects. You know your guy has got a pretty good crit chance when even the kind effects is like, nope. Not even gonna go near that. I'm disappointed that our high level guy got murdered. Doesn't really matter though. He will return, and hopefully not be a massive disappointment. You can just one-shot all of these guys, so do it. We have ten Dora for food for Baba. Excellent. Thank you, Merc. See, I, I love having this cat. This cat has actually started making me money on the internet. It's pretty good, like, I have a cat that basically pays for herself via the internet, which is quite impressive, really, when you think about it. Like, she actually seems to earn at least as much money as she costs, like, to maintain. It's pretty good. I should have got a cat ages ago, apparently. Speaking of Baba, I'm not actually sure where she is. She's probably taking her afternoon nap. Which means she'll be... Uh, probably in the other room. Somewhere. It's like her afternoon spot in the other room, which is not... The other bedroom that isn't a bedroom. I thought you said YouTube was a hobby, not for money or views. Yeah, it is. It is a hobby and not for money or views. It's just that I have a cat that pays for itself. What that means is free cat. <laughs> you just mentioned that you've mentioned that you've got a cat on the internet and people give you money. It's like, ah, there you go. I'm going to give you some money for having a cat. What that means is that my cat is free. Like, I'm, I'm actively not having to spend money on my cat because the cat is like, earning its own keep, as it were. So, you know, that, that's a thing. It's different from being all like, oh, give me your money. It's like, no, the, the cat, the cat's like, the cat has her own kitty to not make too horrendously bad of a pun about it. All right, let's behold as we get another assault marine for me to immediately dismiss. Oh no, we got another tactical marine. Cool. Silver skulls. Oh, that's cool. We finally got a dude who does bonus damage with flame weapons. Other bedroom equals kitty dungeon or lair. Yeah, pretty much. It is basically just her room. It's where her cat tree and uh, food bowls and tray and all of that stuff are. So it is basically her room, kind of. Look, it's not like I spoil my cat and she's got her own bedroom in the in the, the house or anything. She's not spoiled. You shut up. You shut your mouth. She's not a spoiled cat. <clears throat> can you actually level up now? Oh, you can. We can make your crit chance even higher. Yeah, 32% crit. 
with like a 42% crit on the, the, the gun. It's... I wonder, is that the total? Or is that, um... Yeah, it's the total. So the, the total crit chance is uh, 42% now. It is true, my cat is treated better than most African children. Because I have the cat because I want to have the cat, not because I want to exploit it as labor, even though I exploit it as, as labor. Extra damage on flame, set him loose on the comment section. Oh, oh, comment section. You know, I've got, I've got some drama for you, chat. I've got a little bit of drama for you here. You, um... T taking it back to Sargon's embarrassing retirement before he actually even fucking did anything because he couldn't handle 24 hours of being a politician or anything like that. Um, you know in his shitty response video that he made to me where he sucks on his own farts and like sucks them out via his dick? Um, you remember in the start of that, or I think it was the start of the video, somewhere around there he was like, oh, people are telling me that I have deleted this comment. No, I haven't. Look, it's in the spam box. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to favorite it to get it out of the spam box. Um, so he tried to restore it after that. Now, this is the funny thing. Um, on your YouTube account, if you, like, click the notification replies to a comment, you go and you see the comment on that video. Like, your comment is always the top comment on the video so that you can find it. Um... And when people were saying that comment was deleted because it was in that spam folder, I could still see my comment on that video. It was still the top comment for me, which is why I was thinking, uh, maybe it's just a YouTube bug or something at the time. Um, and then Sergens pointed out the spam folder thing, um, which means obviously it was in the spam folder, which is why I could still see it there. And now my comment is no longer on that video. Even if I click the notifications which should link me immediately to the responses to that comment, it goes to the video and my comment isn't there, which means my comment is not on the video and it's not in the spam folder, which basically I am like 99% certain means that that comment has actually been deleted. And I'm like 99% certain of that because people were copy pasting my comment in that comment section to make sure that it lived on. And like all of those comments are gone as well, unless they're in a comment chain. So I think he's actually been moderating his comment section and deleting that comment and deleting anyone who copy pastes that comment as well. I don't have 100% proof for that, but just given how YouTube is behaving, that when I click on responses in my notifications to go to that comment thread and it's not there and none of the uh, responses are there, I think it was deleted afterwards, which is like 99% certain that what he did was made a really big show about like, oh, I'm, I'm going to let my detractors speak and put it out and let them have the thing. And then it's um, deleted and then he deleted it afterwards because he couldn't handle the flack that he was getting for it and didn't like the fact that that comment really got under his skin and bruised his ego like immensely. Oh no, a YouTuber deleted a comment. I know, I know. But it really shouldn't be that shocking, uh, especially for a YouTuber with such a massive ego and such a thin skin about it. Um, but it's just because he made that really big show about getting it out of the spam folder and being all like, oh, look, I didn't delete it. That now, like, a few days later, I'm like 99% certain that he deleted it after that fact, which kind of just makes him a manipulative piece of shit if that is the case. Like I said, not 100% sure if I know that that's what happened, but I'm like 99% certain that that's what happened. Which is just so funny to me, frankly. Alright. Uh, do we want to do another mission? We should probably do another mission. <laughs> Sargoy of Massad censoring people's speech. Say it ain't so! Like I said, I can't say it is definitively so. I am just 99% percent certain that it is true. Yeah, but hurt ego is idiotic. Nothing is shameful about being wrong, only not learning from mistakes or admitting you made them. Yeah, pretty much. You just learned moderators can delete shit too. Oh, okay. Does he have any moderators on his channel? Like, I, I actually don't know, so... If he does, then it might be a moderator that did it, but uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that that will be the case. Um, but yeah, I just, he has mods and some of them do mod things out of his view. Ah, uh, a Trumpian thing, ironically, yes. 
Yeah, so I have to wonder if one of his moderators uh, removed it for him then, because he was, um... Uh, because it clearly triggered him greatly over the fact that he made a fucking 20-minute response video to it, which is also really funny, because there were loads of other comments which were critical of him as well, and they didn't get response videos. I can't help but think that the only reason that he did a response video to that comment is because it was me that made it. Like, if it was anyone else, I don't think he would have bothered. I think he just saw my name and was like, oh, look, another YouTuber that I, that, you know, has, like, spoken against me. I can turn this into something rather than, you know, just looking at it as a generic comment. It's, no, I, th I think who made that comment might have had something to do with it. Yeah, not, not that I'm uh, going to be egotistical about it, but I do have to accept that, um, that uh, the name and the logo attached to that comment does have some value. I really wish that it didn't sometimes, but, you know, it's just how it is, really. Probably should have logged into an alternative account and left the same comment, just like with a different username or something, so that it didn't have that. When you spoke to Sarwin about the whole thing, it's out of character for him. Eh. I don't think it is out of character for him. So I think he's just, uh very high on his ego at the moment. Will I rename this channel to Bubba the Cat? No, because it's not her channel. I don't know if you've noticed, but she doesn't appear on this channel very often. Uh, she only ever appears on this channel, like, when it's sort of night time, like the evening, and she's actually awake and doing things. And usually she just comes in here to shout at me because she wants something. Normally like, oh, it's playtime, so, yeah. Mm, I want to level up that low-level Silver Skulls dude. Where is he? Where is he? Yeah, that one. We've got... Oh, damn. No, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to uh, just check their inventory. Yeah, that's not the guy who's good with uh, flames. That's just a generic guy, so we want this guy to have the flamer. The flamer! Because we only have, like, one flamer. We don't. We have several flamers, but yeah, I don't need that other guy to have the flamer anymore. 70%. We can go higher. Give him an 80% chance. Give him a low-level one. And what's he got? Dodge attack. Yeah, dodge attacks. Close range. He could be pretty good, you know, sort of like a close range flamer dude, because he's got the uh, chance to dodge all attacks. We then give him, like, a dispersion field or something uh, later on. That'll be fine. Not sure, uh, what is it, I'm about 98% sure it was mods because Sargon can't do 3,000 comments in 20 minutes. I don't know, like, some people when they get really fucking triggered, I mean, you got to remember that in order to delete comments, all you have to do is go to, like, the comments tab and just go down and press the little, um, like, bin button thing. You can just go and it's just, it's just as fast as you can click on a screen, basically, so, you know, you could probably do it. Like, if you got really fucking triggered and some of those 3,000 comments are in comment chains underneath those ones, you could totally do it. It is a thing that you could absolutely do. <clears throat> Don't underestimate uh, the haste that some people can move at when their pride is hurt. This is just one of those, like, hold-the-line missions, isn't it? So... Probably gonna take this guy, he's really good. He's got a plasma gun that can never overheat, which is, like, awesome. And extra damage to plasma guns. I kinda wish I could get, like, the little purity seal for extra damage to plasma guns. Should probably unlock the, uh... That ability. What's that? That's uh, just extra crit to the team. Reminds me, there exist bots you can give names of YouTubers to and insta dislike or report videos as they upload, which is fucking sad. Yeah, it is. There are people who do that. I really don't understand it. 
I'm pretty sure I've got someone who's got my name on one of those lists because every single video I have basically has a down vote almost as soon as it's up, uh, uploaded. Like within about 10 minutes there will always be one. Which is possible that I just made a bit of a shitty video that someone didn't like, but given the fact that they normally are positively received, I find that unusual. And it's the fact that it's just so consistent as well. Hmm... I'm not sure what we want to give that guy. Probably more grenades. Grenades are always useful. Everyone likes grenades. I have an incendiary grenade. They're fun. Now I've just got to remember which ones are which. Ugh, I really wish there was a mouse over function so you could check that. Yeah, this should be alright. We're just on a hold your ground mission, so we should survive. Kill team, the enemy is coming. Ready your weapons and remember your battle oaths. The fortress must hold. This day will be long and marked with blood. Oh yeah. All right, let's uh, prepare to hold the line and be awesome on the mission that makes me really wish that cover was actually a thing and that you could actually use it properly. I remember most of them come from like over here. There we go. Okay, mostly Hormigant dudes have showed up. Let's uh, get ready to go smack them around a little bit. You can shoot that from there. Do it. You did it. I'm so fucking proud of you. You wonder if Sargon will exit the internet with a bang like Kraut or a whimper. Ah, uh, probably a bit of a bang. I can't imagine him doing anything quietly, because I don't think his ego would allow him to do that. Alright, overpowered multi-melter. Step forth and murder literally everything. If you wouldn't mind refunding some action points, that would be great. Kraut left with a bang and came back with a whimper. <laughs> it's true, he really did. The Kraut saga is a curious thing. I love getting double shots when you shoot at things that are really close with bolters. It really does sort of make it sound like it's a proper, oh god, just die sort of thing. Just like just rapid firing fucking bolt guns into them. It's great. Oh no, we've got those biovores that aren't actually biovores. They're called pyrovores because they use fire for some reason. Give yourself bonus damage, that thing needs to die, because they do actually quite a lot of damage.
Mm, you only take one hit from that thing. It's not the end of the world if you do. Oh no! Touched you in the face. I think you should shoot it. I think it's dead, buddy. Okay, you you guys want to walk into this cone of Overwatch fire? I mean, I'm okay with that. <laughs> conserve ammo. I don't think these guys know how to conserve ammo. It's like, it's right next to you. One shot in the head will do. Nine shots later. As soon as that thing moves out, give it hell. That guy must be getting kind of sad over there. There's not much for him to shoot. Yes, it's the enemy turn. Would you like to do something now? There we go. Did it. Is that a Tyranid with a rail gun? Um, kind of. For how immensely hard that thing hits, it might as well be a freaking rail gun. Can we finish that thing? Be nice if we can. I don't really want to waste a grenade on something with that little HP left. There we go. Incendiary grenade it, because you've got them. Aha, now you're on fire. Enjoy it. You don't seem to be wanting to take very much damage. Have a blind grenade, because it'll blind both of you. Haha. I think these guys might as well just move over here. I mean, you're going to get touched, like, once. I'm sure you can live with it. There you go. Yay! Ugh, biovores, man. Those things annoy me. They have no right to be as tanky as they are. Oh, you know what? Just supercharge, shoot it in the face. There you go. Oh god, if you had the ability that lets you shoot everything you can see. One, two, three. If he's standing there, he can use that ability. <laughs> Go nuts! <laughs> oh, I love that ability, it's so much fun. Space Marines are not high IQ. Uh, Robber B confirmed for having not read enough 40k fluff 
Uh, Space Marines are actually highly intelligent. They base it because of the um, gene therapy they undergo to uh, treat the brains and whatnot. Um, they tend to actually have basically a genius level IQ as a minimum, along with uh, photographic memory and recall. Don't we already have railguns? Yes. We've actually had railguns since uh, the 80s, like really early prototypes of them. Uh, the earliest one I know of that existed that actually sort of had practical application was back in like, what was it, 2006, 2007, something like that. That was like the first one that I properly saw working. I was also on a highly experimental uh, research vessel, which was uh, pretty fun, actually. It's kind of weird, you know, you're just walking along and by a dock and the officer that's with you is just like, oh yeah, that's that's just like the new secret prototype ship. Um, don't tell anyone you saw that because, you know, it's, it's not supposed to exist yet. That was That was a pretty surreal experience. It's like, oh, you've, you've got this thing here. You know that, like, literally anyone who walks down this area can see it, right? But yeah, but shut up. Very weird time. That was just weak, dude. Come on. I kind of want this thing to die, like, right now, because otherwise it's going to use its really annoying ability that, like, will one-shot someone. Okay, we're going to have to chuck a grenade at it. No action points for you. And we'll melt a gun you to death next turn, it'll be great. Because melt a guns are OP. It's not so much that plasma guns are shit, it's just that they, there's specific targets that they're good against, and it seems really weird that they've just decided that they're bad against heavy armor, which is like, no, they're supposed to be pretty good against armor. I mean, it's like, look, you can see this is all the stuff, um, I shall see where we, if we can get one with a melter gun next to it as well, and you can see. Yeah, we've got melt mastercrafted everything. So you see, they their damage is higher than the bolt gun. Um, not as high as the melter gun, though. Uh, way higher than the grav gun, but the grav gun is there for uh, stunning things. So you can see, it's, um, its damage is okay. Um... But the, the advantage for it is the fact that you're supposed to be able to overcharge it, and the overcharge is supposed to hit really, really hard. Um, and it does, but again, they, it seems to only really be useful against certain targets. Like, that, that, that's the thing that I don't get about this game, is that plasma guns seem to suck against armored targets, which is like, no, plasma guns are supposed to wreck armored targets. Uh, they seem to be better at taking down unarmed things. Like, if you're taking out armored things, uh, melter guns seem to be the way to go or really heavily um, charged up plasma guns. I mean, like, the sorts of things where you use an ability or an item that lets you take, like, four action points from the next turn and use them now, so you've got, like, eight action points, and then you overcharge that, so you get the base damage, and then seven uh, actions worth of overcharging. That hits like an absolute truck if you do that, but... Yeah, it, it is a bit weird. How is a heavy bolter stronger than a melter gun? Uh, because it is.
what you've got to remember is this damage is done across a volley of shells, whereas this damage is from a single shot. So, uh, this melter gun does all that damage in a single shot. This uh, heavy bolter, as you can see, does it in a count in across a volley of seven shots. So, that's the difference. And again, also, melter gun, one shot, plasma gun across two volleys. So, it's different. That, that'll be why it's uh, uh, it comes in at different rates there. Also, they had to differentiate, you know, really heavy stuff than, uh, than like, uh, the medium range weapons and the pistol weapons. Because, obviously, you have to take into account game mechanics a little bit. Actually, we could probably sell off some of our inventory, some of the lower level stuff that we really don't need anymore. Uh, I don't really need a huge number of multi-melters. They're not actually hugely good. Let's sell up a heavy bolter, I guess. I just want to get up to 100 requisition there so I can uh, buy us an extra pack. There we go. Because who knows, we might get uh, an awesome space marine in this pack. Or what will happen is we'll get like a low level assault marine or something. Oh no, veteran. Veteran assault marine. Of course it was a freaking assault marine, because, you know, we don't have too many of those. It's not like we've got an absolute ton of assault marines here. It's not, it's not like... It's not like we've got all of these really awesome high-level assault marines, all of these champion assault marines and things. I know now we've got a really mediocre low-level assault marine as well. Yay. Yay. Okay, sure. Actually, he was the veteran assault marine, wasn't he? Where is he? Yeah, somewhere. Oh well, that was uh that was a little bit disappointing. Oh well. Gotta end on a low note, I feel. That way everyone goes away from the stream feeling miserable and depressed rather than, you know, happy and excited that they've been here. I think that's uh I think that's a better way to end things. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go and do that, because why not? We've been doing this for like what, an hour and a half now. So yeah. I'm gonna go like lay down or something. Is the naming the original one given by the game, or is it my strange taste in names? No, this is this is what the game names them. They're all uh, in line with chapter traditions and whatnot, so they all make sense. It's pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna go and do something else with my time now, and hopefully I will uh, I don't know do a video or something like next week or something. Like I said, I've got a lot of stuff planned, it's just whether I have the motivation and actually the energy to, you know, fucking do shit anymore. Which I increasingly don't, but oh well, we'll see how it goes. So thank you for joining me, chat. I will see you, uh, yeah, when I see you.